Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy. In this video, we are going to be reading XML files using jQuery, a JavaScript library. I'm going to choose an XML file. We're going to go ahead and put it into a, a local file and start reading through this data. Uh, we're going to look at reading attributes as well. So we're going to be adding some attributes to some of the nodes that we've got here. And just overall, we're going to take a look at, you know, the different ways that we can read XML files and how we uh, sort of traverse down and, and read different nodes uh, values. So the first thing to do really is look at how we're organizing our file structure. Now this isn't going to be a complicated tutorial, so really we're only working with a few files. So the uh, directory structure looks a lot like this. We've got an index file, which is the file that we're going to be using to display the output from the XML. Uh, I've created an XML folder, which is going to hold an XML feed. Uh, obviously the path to the XML will be different, maybe different in your case. And we've got a JS folder, which contains just our just a, a primary style sheet uh, that we're going to link into our index uh, file here. So uh, this is the XML file that we're going to be reading and this comes from the Twitter API. Uh, you can see I've got user timeline, there's also a JSON um, feed available. Uh, oops. So uh, that will uh, you know, be the case if you're reading JSON, but in this case we're reading, oh sorry, it will be here. So .json like that. Uh, but in this case, you would change this to XML if you are having trouble finding that feed. But obviously, you might be working with your own feed. And in that case, you can follow along in that case. Um, there's also a count attribute at the end, uh, a count uh, parameter at the end. And I've just changed this to three. So we've got three statuses here uh, from um, this Twitter API account. Uh, but we can go and uh, go ahead and change that to the PHP Academy uh, Twitter account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view the page source on here. So I've got the absolute XML uh, document here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to open up my uh, timeline.xml uh, file and paste this in. So essentially what I've just done is stolen an XML feed uh, so I can start working on this. So I've saved that there. Um, I can go ahead and start working on my other files now. Now inside index.html, I've already laid out a document markup. Uh, we've got a simple title. We're including jQuery, which is extremely important. So go ahead and add this line to include jQuery to your page uh, if you haven't already. And also then I'm in including my primary.js uh, JavaScript file. So all of the logic for this and all of the reading is going to go ahead in this file to read from this file and then it will be displayed here. So in terms of markup, we need somewhere to store this. So uh, let's go ahead and create uh, a div. And I'm going to give this a class of timeline. Now inside here, I'm going to create an empty unordered list. And basically, each of the timeline uh, statuses is going to go within a list item within this unordered list. So you know, depending on how you structure your markup, this is how I'm going to be doing it. Uh, and if the time, if the feed isn't available for some reason, we're going to you know, just replace all of this with an error message. So inside primary.js now, we need to go ahead and use the uh, Ajax method from jQuery to go ahead and read this uh, this timeline file. So let's go ahead and do that now. We use dot Ajax. So this is represent uh, representing jQuery. And in here, we pass different settings um, based on what we want to read and how we want to read them. So in this case, we need to specify a URL, which is important. Uh, this is in the XML folder and we're reading timeline.xml. So that's relatively straightforward. The next one is type, and this is just how it's read by the server. Now I tend to say get here, but in this case, this is by default. So we don't need to include this. Uh, we also need a data type. Well, we don't need a data type, but we're gonna say um, to this method that this data is going to be an XML format. Now we also have uh, functions that perform based on the success or, fa or error. Now we're just going to be using success or error, there's a variety of others, uh, but in this case we're going to say success and then in this function we're going to run code when this has been uh, successfully read and we're also going to have one for error. Now we'll do the error one first and then we'll cause an error to see what happens. So here I'm going to use a selector to select timeline and I'm going to say dot text and I'm just going to insert plain text. So I'll say failed to get feed. Now let's take a look at what happens now uh, in our browser. So let me go ahead and open up my browser. 
and here if I hit enter nothing happens so we can assume that this has worked now what happens if we change this to perhaps add an extra L on the end maybe we've misspelled it maybe the file's not available or the structure of the file isn't something that this method can read then we get this failed to get feed error here which is good because uh, for debugging uh, this really helps we can also do things like uh, console.log to log to the uh, the Chrome console or the console Okay, so success, what do we want to do? Now, this is the actual part where we're looking at actually reading the data. Now, we need this um, parameter in here, data, which is gonna represent the data that comes back from this URL. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and say console.log data. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I've, you can see I've got my um, web developer tools open here. I did that just by inspecting element anywhere on the page, or you can also get it from the menu. So in this case, what's going to happen is um, in console, you can now see that we've got this document hash here. And basically, it's just pulling in the XML file in the console so we can see what we're working with. So if you're unsure of what anything contains or how you can start to read anything, if you do a console.log on something, it will interpret it and give it to you uh, how you can sort of interpret it yourself. So in this case, what we can now do is start to find what we need and loop through it. Now, if we look at our XML file, we've got this status node here, which contains a lot of data. And then we've got another one here, which again contains a lot of data. So for every status, it's the actual status. So we've got text here, uh, which contains um, a, a basically a tweet, so a status update. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through each of these status nodes within this overall status um, node. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we need to use a jQuery each method, uh, but what we're going to be performing that on is data. But the first thing we want to do is find each of the statuses. So I'm going to say find status statuses status dot each, and then in here a function. So let me just explain this a bit. We are looking for the status node within statuses, which we've just looked at. And for each one, we're gonna run this function here. So for example, if we were to alert one for each one, you'd probably guess that that would alert one, two, and three. So we've got three statuses. Um, but in here, we don't want to do that because that's annoying. We want to actually grab this data. So what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, a few uh, variables that are going to be accessible within this uh, function, and then we're going to append them to that UL within our timeline class or timeline div. So the first one is status. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this, which references the current uh, status that we have found. And we're going to find something. And what we're finding is text. And then we're grabbing the text from that. So let me just explain this a little bit. If we go over to our XML file, we're finding text within status. So that makes sense, status, and then here's text. So we're finding text within status, and then we're grabbing the text from it. So uh, now what we can do is start to apply this to our uh, page. 